Hello guys, in this tutorial we're gonna take a look at how to post data to an API using React.js. I have done a similar tutorial to this, uh, but with how to get data. So if you want to check out instead how to get data from an API with React, check out the description. I'm gonna leave a link to the video in the description. So as I said, we're going to take a look at how to post data in React.js. So let's get started. You need Node.js for this and npm. I'm going to start by using the npx command and type in npx create React app. And we're going to create the React app from scratch. Let's name this React post. You can name it whatever you want. And if the npx, NPX command isn't working for you, make sure you have a new updated version of node and npm so the reason you want to probably post something with uh, react.js is probably if you want to save some data for example a form and you want to send the data to the backend developers or you want to create an api for yourself and uh, process the data all right so the project has been installed. Let's go ahead and see the into it. So see the React post. And to start the project, we're just gonna type npm start and it's gonna <coughs> open up in the browser on port 3000. And there we go, we got a fresh React.js project. So go ahead and open up the project in your preferred text editor. I'm using Sublime Text. text. And then go to source and app.js. I'm gonna change the syntax here to Babel. I'm also gonna change the indention to tab width four to make it easy for you to read. And we can go ahead and remove everything between the div with the class name of app and below. I'm just gonna go ahead and indent this. Like that, we can also remove the logo and app.css because we won't be needing them. So the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and also import component from React. As you can see, this is a function-based uh, component we're using here. We're going to change this to a class-based component. So let's change this to class app extends component like that. So now we got a class based component and we're going to push in a lifecycle method here called render, which is responsible for rendering the data in the component to the browser to the client. All right. So now once that's done, let's just type something here. Hello, and then open up the browser and check that everything works. Everything works. All right. All right. Go ahead and right click and choose inspect and then console. Yes, so we can debug the development flow here. So let's remove that hello and we can start by adding a simple HTML5 button. And let's say press me to post some data. Like that. Then we're gonna add a React event here called on click so when someone clicks this this button we're gonna call a function we're gonna use an arrow function to call this function and we're gonna say this dot let's say post data and we're not gonna send any parameters here because this function won't take any arguments so above the render method here let's go ahead and add the post data method Let's try it out. Let's say alert testing. And then go back. Let's press to post some data. And as you see, we're getting an alert. Everything works. So that's it. We got everything set up to get started with the actual posting of data with React. To do this, we're going to use the fetch method available in React. And we're gonna wrap this in a try catch, all right? So we're gonna use the await keyword, uh, but first we're gonna make this function an async function, all right? This has to be async in order to use the 
await keyword with the async function. All right, so we're gonna add a try catch block here and console.log e. This is just in case we get any errors. Now you don't have to use an async function for this. I'm mainly doing this when I'm developing because it's faster for error handling. The try catch is super good for error handling and it speed things up, it speeds things up and it makes it easier to read and faster to write the code, especially for the error handling. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we need some kind of test API. So get and in your browser, type in webhook.site. I'm not, uh, I don't have anything with the guys who have developed this to do. It's just a really simple way to test out uh, post APIs. And you're gonna get a unique URL here. Click copy to clipboard so you can um, use it. So this is gonna be the API we're gonna post to. And we won't be handling the data, processing the data we're getting, we're only gonna Look at, uh, take a look that we actually getting the data from React. So we're posting the data to the API correctly. All right. So first let's define a variable. We can use a let for that. Let's call it result, which is gonna hold the result from the post API. And we're gonna say await fetch. In the fetch argument, go ahead and post the, oh sorry, paste the, um, URL you just uh, copied. So that's gonna be the endpoint for our API, all right? Now we're gonna go ahead and add some, a method, oops, a method as well, uh, a mode, a couple of headers, and a body containing some data, the payload for the post, all right? So to begin with, if you have watched the previous get tutorial, we used the get method there, which is the default for fetch. For this example, we're using the post instead, since we're gonna post some data to the API. We're gonna set the mode to no course. Course stands for cross origin resource sharing. And we're gonna disable course just to get rid of some errors that we're gonna get if we don't. Next up is headers. We're gonna pass in two headers. Uh, first of all, the accept header, which we're gonna say application slash JSON. We're also gonna pass in the content type header and the same there, application slash JSON. All right. The accept header let's the client know what kind of response is accepted. And in this case, we're only get, gonna accept application slash JSON as response, all right? And the result we will get back is JSON, so that's perfectly fine. The content type uh, lets the server know what kind of co content the client is uh, sending. And we're gonna send some JSON data, so application slash JSON works fine in this case as well. All right, so we got the method, we got the mode, and we got the headers. Now there's not much left. We're just gonna add a simple body. And to add the body, we're gonna say JSON stringify because we're gonna stringify a JSON object. And this will be the actual payload, the data we will send to the API. And just to try this out, let's add a key here. And let's say my username. Let's pretend someone filled in a form. We got this username value and someone choose to name my username and I want to post it to an API where someone can save it to a database, all right? And if everything works fine there, we're gonna just go ahead and console.log the result. So let's just say result and log out the actual result, all right? So let's go ahead and try this out. We got no requests here. So let's see what happens if we press me to post some data and we are actually getting some data here, as you can see. You can see a couple of headers sent here. 
you can also see the more important thing that we're looking for in this case the actual data we are sending and this is then the json stringified object we're sending with the key of key one and the value of my username as we hard coded in right so there you go that's a simple uh, api request in react <clears throat> and let's just remove that and try to console.log the result like that instead as you can see we're getting a result here from the api with a couple of different uh, properties that we don't need to pay attention to right now all right so that's it for uh, by the way we can just to show you let's add another key we can call this anything we want let's say uh, email my mail at gmail.com name john last name do h12 got an error here um, that's a dot a comma there should be right and let's try again we can remove this previous post and post some data again and open up webhook.site and see what we got for keys now so as you can see we got uh, sorry for the data now as you can see we're actually posting uh, the username the email the name and the last name the age all the properties we have specified we wanted to pass to the api all right so that's how you uh, post data in react.js now you can of course set up your own api and not use uh, the webhook.site but it's all right for testing but if you set up your own api you can uh, receive this value on the api side and you can save them to a database for example mysql mongodb and so on and you can create a login system or basically anything you want where you want people to be able to add data to to the server or post data to the server and then the server side can handle that on the api side but this uh, comes in handy for front-end developers who needs to post data so I hope you learned something and bye bye.